Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. Sorry I'm a little bit tired. Um, we're going to finish off now and go and have a master's PhD. And I'll tell you what I think of his PhD. Um, he, he then goes on from a dialogue with C.S. Lewis and, and uh, David Hume. Um, he goes on to say in page 137, but as Panabird notes, the narratives record several event different appearances which occur under many different circumstances and times and even includes different uh, participants so he's, he's noting there that if you're saying that the resurrection took place because it was an illusion or it was um, a vision that there were so many different ways and, and methods of of groups and individuals and at different times of these experiences with Jesus that it doesn't fit any psychological model he notes that the early formulation page 156 in 1 Corinthians 15 shows that there was early in the church proclamation that Jesus had risen from the dead he notes that the difference between the Jesus and the myths mythological ideas that were around is that the vegetation gods that the Christian faith centers on a historical person Jesus and the mythical uh, gods vegetation gods do not Pannenberg writes in the first century of Palestine there are almost no traces whatsoever of any influence from ancient cults of the resurrection gods page 163 um, so that's Habermas's PhD he basically um, he looks at David Hume he looks at Pannenberg and uh, he looks at um, Kierkegaard and he looks at a, an orthodox position and he engages with them looking at a lot of present and later scholars on historical Jesus studies the PhD is well written uh, it's a little bit biased because he's evangelical uh, but uh, it really goes into depth and fair exposition of especially of David Yu and of Pannenberg and is a good introduction to the historical Jesus studies uh, an excellent piece of writing uh, that's Gary Habermas's PhD and I've linked to that and we're going to finish off with a few minutes on his minimal fact approach and I'll give you my opinion as to what he says long arguing the way critics argue from the New Testament to show that Jesus did this but the, what is being proclaimed is the best book just came out you guys know that Craig Keener's book just came off. They were at the ETS, which is why we're here in San Francisco. I'm jumping through a lot of society. And on the table, Baker Academic Books, a two-volume set of books on the miracles of Jesus, more than a 1,000 pages. Ben Witherington, who's teaching somewhere here tonight, excellent New Testament scholar, Ben calls it the best thing ever written on the miracles of Jesus. And it documents Jesus as a miracle work. We're not counting the resurrection. We're talking about people he touched and healed and exorcisms and nature miracles and so on. And then Craig does a bunch of contemporary miracles. A bunch of contemporary miracle claims. And he just lays the data there and says, you make these decisions. Now, some of you maybe are not Christians. You're skeptics. You hear your Christian friends say miracles are still occurring today. Craig documents a bunch of them including, and you're going to have to make your own decisions about these things, including resurrections, Lazarus-type resurrections where people are going to die again, not Jesus-type resurrections. But this is over a thousand pages long. The guy who's doing it has a PhD from Duke, 
and he has a minor in classics. When he did his commentary in the Gospel of John, he had 20,000 cross-references to classics. His commentary in Acts, which is coming, his commentary from Acts, I understand it's going to have, it's going to be several thousand pages and a hundred thousand classical references. So just check this out. Two volumes, Miracles, Craig Keener, K-E-E-N-E-R, Baker Books. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. I'm just going to make these two points. New Testament books are in the right place, right time, closest to the data to be taken seriously as Greco-Roman biography. And that they're much better positioned than almost anything in the ancient world. And secondly, if miracles bother you because they're in the New Testament, look at the data for Jesus being a miracle worker. And here's one odd thing. The, you know how we think that when legend happens, the story keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger? John is down here at plus 65. John reports less miracles than any of the gospel. Critics don't talk about that. When things don't fit their thesis, they quit talking. But why does John have less miracles than Mark does? And Mark's the earliest. Okay, I'm done with some of these reliability deals. I'm going to move now to this minimal facts thing, and I'm going to use the New Testament the way skeptics use the New Testament. And I'm going to argue that if you use data scholars allow, Jesus has been raised from the dead. Now, let me just start with a provocative comment from one of the top historical Jesus scholars around. I believe he calls himself a liberal. His name is E.P. Sanders. He recently retired from Duke. He used to teach at Oxford. He's got a couple books out that changed the course of New Testament scholarship. Very reputable. He wrote a little book, I believe 1993. It's called The Human Figure of Jesus. And he starts with data scholars know. Data that scholars know about the historical Jesus. And guess what he says when it comes to the aftermath of Jesus' death? He's telling you what scholars believe today, what critics believe. And he says, scholars agree that after his death, Jesus appeared to his early disciples. And then he says, he says this twice in the book, Jesus appeared to his disciples. How he appeared, exactly how he appeared, I'm not prepared to say. But twice he says, my point is, he's not even giving his view. He's telling you what the consensus of scholarship is today. So, uh, Gary Habermas will go into um, trying to explain to you that that 1 Corinthians 15 passage is early source material. And from that it tells you that the early church believed Jesus died and rose again. And the fact, the historical fact is that that's what the disciples believed. Now whether they were right or wrong you could debate it. But that's the fact. The, the fact is they didn't um believe in an imaginary rising of Jesus, it was a real historical death and resurrection. That's the minimal fact approach using historical data that the critics use. The critics will grant you one Corinthians fifteen. Um uh, and we've looked at Gary Habis Massey's PhD and anybody who says miracles can't happen, Jesus didn't rise from the dead because miracle can't happen based on the uniformity of nature, you just say, Well, how do you know everything in nature? and the knowledge that we do have is only small and infinitesimal so there is a possibility that miracles do uh, can break in and if that's the case we need to investigate the historical information concerning Jesus all right I'm gonna have a sleep for five minutes and, and recuperate and then I'm going to be back uh, to do some more uh, studies I hope you found uh, Gary Habermas of interest I've linked to his site and I hope that introduces you a little bit to him and his scholarship. Uh, he's a big scholar and um, I've read nearly all of his material and I've listened to most of his lectures and debates. Um, so I hope you find him a blessing. All right.